kick the ball. Drops a certain touchdown pass, Gerbach. Yeah, you can't believe it. Michigan still up 13-6, though, and Darren Boyer takes the handoff, busts in from eight yards out. PAT failed, Michigan up one. Then Jesse Johnson up the middle, 11-yard touchdown, went for two. It was key. They didn't get it. 19-15 Wolverines. But Jason Verdusco brings the Illini back on the option. Darts just over the goal line. Two-yard run. Illinois, 22-19. The Michigan comes back. On third down, they don't go for the win. They just set up the tying field goal. It's good. 22-22. Michigan drops out of national championship contention, but clinches the Rose Bowl by tying Illinois 22 all. They ended up with 10 fumbles, lost four of them. Blowout time now. Tulane and Florida State. <laughs> Seminole alum Burt Reynolds came along and brought some new pants. Seminoles in the old Garnet uniforms. They could have worn anything and beaten Tulane. The block pump right here. Clifton Abraham blocks it, scoops it up. 14 zip Knowles. It was 35 nothing after a quarter. Abraham again picks off the Billy Duncan pass weaves his way through the green wave offense into the end zone. The Seminoles just cruising, and Buddy Tevens possibly wishing he had one of his old Dartmouth teams on the field. 70 to seven as Charlie Ward throws for 220 and four touchdowns. Clifton Abraham, big day, blocked the punt, had the interception, scored two different ways. Meanwhile, South in the Orange Bowl. Miami, a similar mismatch against Temple. 13-0, start of the second quarter in Gino Toretta. To Cy E. Tucker, his first college catch. Guys in Miami you never heard of big today. 20 zip in the second quarter. Chris Palisak's pass picked off, off the hands of Wilbur Washington. Who are these guys? To Dexter Siegler. Back he goes, 89 yards to the touchdown. Miami defense getting in on it, 27 nothing at that point. In the third quarter, Toretta, watch Horace Copeland here. It's not going to be caught. Horace doesn't know it. Gets up. Yeah, I'm going to celebrate. Here comes the flip. And then Keita Crispena answers. <laughs> Copeland a 5.2 because he lost his shoe. Crispena 5.4. But Miami wins it 48 0. The streak's still alive in the Orange Bowl. Gino Toretta, 16 of 23, 222 yards and two touchdowns. He took himself out of the ballgame. Could have run up huge numbers. Chose not to. Now, the national championship impact. Huge here, I think, Lee. I think um, the Cotton Bowl got to be jumping for joy. They're only a loss by Alabama away from having a national championship game now because of that Michigan tie. I disagree with you, Chris. I hate to disagree with you, but <laughs> Florida State University has won the last two weeks, 139-7. to I think they'll leapfrog the Texas A&M team because Texas A&M only beat Houston by eight points. And don't forget an interesting point. Florida State has only lost one game by one point to the number one team in the nation, Miami, in Miami. Well, they're a great team, but on the basis of 70-7, to 7, you can't jump. Now, Craig, what about the Michigan playing for a tie in the Rose Bowl, but dropping out of the national championship? You had a similar situation in SMU. Yeah, right? I did, and I'm going to tell you about that, but i got to first start off with saying here, you don't let A&M fall out. They're 10-0, and 0, period. Don't you, <laughs> Michigan and Nebraska would have loved to have squeaked out. Now, about the situation I had, we had... A similar deal as Michigan today. In 82, we decided to go for a tie against Arkansas. We had to because that achieved our goal, and that was to get to the Cotton Bowl. We got to the Cotton Bowl, but it cost us the national championship. And I'm sure, like all players, that we would all like to have had the chance to have won the national championship that year. And that's something Michigan players won't have a chance to do. Not second-guessing Gary Moeller. It's just one of those things you look back in history and say, Gah! Speaking from a coach's standpoint, <laughs> let me tell you about Gary Moeller. I know he's disappointed he only tied Illinois. But Michigan is now tied or share five straight Big Ten titles. Ohio State's only done it better. They did it six times from 72 to 77. Congratulations, Michigan. You're going to the Rose Bowl. Congratulations. You're also out of the national championship race. Though when they decide it's priority to play for a national championship and not just the Rose Bowl, then I think a Big Ten team will have a chance. Until then, they're going to go to the Rose Bowl and not be in the race. Lee. Speaking of ties, the team that tied uh, Michigan at the start of the season, Notre Dame taking on Penn State in the final meeting of the series. Oh, it's old-fashioned football like it ought to be. The snow flying in South Bend this afternoon as touchdown Jesus looks on. Jopa and Lou. A lot of great memories in the series in recent years. A lot of close finishes. Another one here. Fourth quarter. Penn State by seven. Second and goal at the four. Meyer on the option. Gets stuffed at the four-yard line. You see the clock ticking down. Final 30 seconds. Third and goal. Incomplete to Reggie Brooks on fourth and goal. Meyer back to fast. Jerome Bettis hauls it in. Touchdown. 16-15 Penn State. They would go for two and the win. Similar to a situation a few years ago in State College. Meyer back, the senior, in his final game, looking for heroics. 
throws to another senior, Reggie Brooks, who makes a tremendous diving catch. They get the two-point conversion. Two seniors, heroes in their final home game, 17-16 Notre Dame. Slim, slim title hope still alive for the Irish in Penn State. Falls to six and four. Syracuse and Boston College, Big East tilt and Chestnut Hill. And yes, you have to take the green line to get to the ball game. First quarter scoreless, Marvin Graves escapes pressure. Pump bacon, shake it, bake it. Matriculating the ball in the end zone. Orangeman up 7-0. Back comes Glenn Foley into the end zone, and Ivan Boyd makes a great shoestring catch, ties the game at 7. Third quarter, Cuse up 13-10. Fourth and goal at the one, Graves. Eric Chenoweth breaks open. Graves finds him. Tom Coughlin frustrated for a second week. 20-10 is the score there. And then in the fourth quarter, Graves dives in from one yard out. That capped a 99-yard drive. Syracuse now wins their seventh consecutive game away from the Dome as they start to look towards a game with Miami next week in the Carrier Dome. That will be huge. We've got a lot more ahead on the Residence Inn College Football Scoreboard. Garrison Hurst trying to make some Heisman hay with Toretta so-so numbers in the blowout. Marshall Falk taking on Hawaii. Shane Matthews in Florida trying to move closer to that SEC title game taking on South Carolina. This was an unexpectedly tough game. Presented by Residence Inn by Marriott, the Extended Stay Hotel. And welcome back. Back to some games in progress now. Pacific hosting San Jose State. The ball game is in the third quarter. 21-14. The Spartans have tightened it up, but still down a touchdown at Pacific. This game has just gone final. And UCLA slugs away. They win an ugly game, 9-6 over the Ducks to keep hopes alive for a winning season. They're 5-5 five five now heading into USC. Arizona and the Trojans going at it in the Coliseum, a critical ball game for the runner-up spot in the Pac-10, maybe the Rose Bowl if Washington should lose. Dick Tomey worried about a letdown. His defense handled out a touchdown in the first half all season. Forget about that. Esther Creighton worms it in. Six zip, they missed the point. George Malaulu criticized for being a, a one-dimensional offense. Malaulu going up top here to the freshman, Kerry Taylor, 41-yard touchdown, 7-6 Zona. But late fourth quarter, third and goal for USC. Rob Johnson pitches to Deion Struther, who goes back to Johnson. He's well covered, but a great leaping catch. USC two-point conversion makes it 14-7, and the Trojans hold on to go to 6-2-1. and one. Arizona may have seen their Fiesta Bowl hopes fizzle. They drop to 6-3-1, a nice ball game for Johnson. Washington, clobbering Oregon State. They recover from the loss at Arizona nicely. 45-16 is the final as Mark Brunell throws for two and runs for two. To the Big Ten, Ohio State and Indiana. Tie ball game at three in the third quarter when Robert Smith busts one. He's finally healthy, and so is his offensive line. And look at Smith go. 64 yards. Forget about him. He's just cruising in there. 10-3 Buckeyes at that point. They opened it up late. And they win at Indiana 27-2-10. They're 8-2 with only the game against Michigan at home remaining. That's next week. ACC, Duke, and NC State will pack up 14-7 second quarter when Spence Fisher gets hit, coughs up the football. Mike Harrison made the hit, and Carl Reeves scoops it up. Carl, forget about it. 47-yard touchdown, NC State. Wallops Duke, 45 to 27 at 8, 2, and 1. The Wolfpack are a bold team with one game to go. Now, Georgia and Auburn, an important game for Garrison Hurst Heisman chances. Also an important game for Georgia to have any hope of getting to the SEC title game should Florida lose one of the last two ball games. Third quarter tied at seven. Hurst in motion, and Eric Zier finds him. 64-yard touchdown pass. Dogs up 14-7. Fourth quarter, Auburn down four. Fourth and two from the nine. They keep it alive as James Bostic gets the first down of the five. After they use their last timeout, die. Sends out Stan White, 19 seconds to go. They fumble the ball on the goal line here. This was fourth and goal. The dogs with the ultimate hunker down. Now the clock is just ticking down here. While they argue what's going on, the clock continues to tick. They never do stop the clock. Auburn has a beef here. Even though they lost the football, the clock just ticks down. They get no help. And the home field timekeeper, it runs out in Georgia with the dramatic goal line stand, holds on for the 14-10 victory to go to 6-2 and two in the SEC, 8-2 and two overall. Zaire threw for 205, did have the two interceptions though. Meanwhile, Garrison Hurst, the goal line stand on the Georgia win, really helped his Heisman chances, 167 total yards. He rushed for over 100, but had to carry the ball 31 times. Meanwhile, the Gators in South Carolina 
Gamecocks on that win streak, but you never win in Ben Hill Griffin Stadium at Florida Field if you're a visiting team. Fourth quarter, Florida up 7-3. Shane Matthews threads it to Aubrey Hill. He came out of the slot. The Gamecocks lost track of him there. Florida has to win ugly. They've been doing a lot of that lately at home. 14-9 is the final. The win streak at home goes to 18 games. Shane Matthews rallying late in the senior campaign, 19-32, 259 yards, one touchdown, and one interception. In the SEC, Tennessee stepped out of conference to take on Memphis State, a team they'd never lost to. Johnny Majors, his career winding down at Tennessee following the ouster. Hugh Schuler unloads, and Ronald Davis lays out for a beautiful fingertip catch down at the one-yard line. That sets up James Littleman Stewart, who dives in. Tennessee up 17-7, but they have to hold on to win it 26-21. Memphis State, negative one yards rushing. The Tigers 0-14 all-time against Memphis State. So they expect to beat Memphis State, but still a satisfying win for Johnny Majors, even if he's not getting along great with his staff. You know, so they didn't come over to him at the end of the game there, Lee. You know, Chris, it's a kind of a sad situation. Majors gets a big win here, but it's a bad situation in any way, any way you look at it, when a man who gives almost his entire life to a university is run out of there and not allowed to finish it out based on one lousy month in a football season, on a football field. Well, you look at the entire season, this was a ball club that was going to be in a rebuilding process. They weren't expected to win the SEC division this year. They just weren't. And for Johnny Majors to be handled like this is not fair. It's not fair at all. It's, it shouldn't have happened. Passion for football when carried to that extreme really is a sickness. Mm -hmm. Now back to the Heisman race. Hearst numbers today, pretty good. Georgia gets a win, and that's important. Toretta takes himself out in the blowout. Break it down. Well, I, I believe that Gino Toretta and Garrison Hurst, they've done today what they needed to to stay in that dead heat. Now it's up to Marshall Falk tonight. Falk, you better go out and run for over 200 yards tonight and the rest of these games this year because if you don't, and you got Hurst and Toretta that are ahead. We may have to start calling him Gino Corso, but, but nonetheless. <laughs> well, Gino Corso took himself out after half a game. And let me tell you something on this. He threw for 221 yards, had two touchdowns in one half. But the important thing, he's now throwing 122 straight passes without an interception, a Miami record. The guy deserves the Heisman Trophy. Comes down to Syracuse game next week for Hurst. They got to exactly. play Alabama. Uh, this, they still got games to play out. They got Georgia Tech to play. That's going to be key. All right, we're going to come back with more on the college football scoreboard. As we go to break, one double A scores. Citadel ranked number two. Thought they should have been one. Blows out VMI, but Delaware, the number three team, upended by Richmond, 29-21. bowl game. Clemson actually 5-4 overall, but only four 1A wins. John Kaleo finding Jermaine Lewis splits the defense here. 69-yard touchdown. Terps up 14-6. This would be a sweet win for the Terrapins after a frustrating season. Kaleo, is it a keeper here? No, it's the Ruski. Ron Step, Ron! Ron! There's Ron Stefalino in the end zone. The big guy in the Ruski. 11 yards for the touchdown. Maryland blows out Clemson at College Park. 53-23. John Kaleo, 418 yards and five touchdowns. So Clemson at five and five with one game to play, cannot go to a bowl game. They are bowl ineligible. So is Georgia Tech, beaten by Wake Forest 23-10. The Jackets, one game left, can't get there. But what about the Demon Deacons at seven and three with a road game in NC State? If they win that ball game, some bowls gotta take them. West Virginia and Rutgers. The Mountaineers out of the bowl hunt by losing 13-9, 4-4-2. and two. They can't get there. And Ray Lucas, who replaced Forte, effective with 191 yards. Michigan State beats Purdue 35-13. The Spartans bowl hopes still alive at 5-5 five five as Craig Thomas rushes for 127 yards. Iowa clobbers Northwestern 56-14. Paul Burmeister, four touchdown passes for the Hawkeyes. Wisconsin, big over Minnesota. 34-6 at Camp Randall as Brent Moss rushes for 137 yards. Oklahoma and Oklahoma State in the Big 8. And Scott Blanton, the Sooner kicker, on for the point after to tie the game. But Carlos Irving blocks it. Keith Burns rumbling, stumbling the other way, all the way for the two-point conversion for Oklahoma State. Cowboys up 9-6 in the second quarter. Fourth quarter, we're tied at 12. Oklahoma. Going for the touchdown on fourth and goal. Hale Gundy and the sneak forgot the football. Oklahoma State takes over on downs. Under two minutes. Sooners down 15-12, but driving. Gundy's pass. Almost picked off, but grabbed by Corey Warren. The drive alive, the final seconds. They run up the middle on third down and play for the field goal. Is this a sign of how far things have fallen at Oklahoma? They're satisfied with a tie with Oklahoma State. They don't play for the win. 15 and 15 is the final. Oklahoma 
just five, three, and two. Missouri beats Kansas State 27-14. Jeff Handy, three touchdown passes for the Tigers. Texas all over SMU 35-14. Gardere throws for three touchdown passes, 212 yards. Texas Tech at a wild one over TCU. Hangs on, wins it 31-28. Lloyd Hill. 43-yard touchdown pass with three seconds to go, providing the winning score. Rice and another wild one on the Southwest Conference over Baylor. Trevor Cobb, 128 yards, rushed for a touchdown. Ole Miss and La Tech. Ole Miss ball in the second quarter here. Lawrence Adams will throw to Joe Woods, but the cornerback, Chris Bray, bats it into midair, and Marvin Courtney catches it. Forget about him. 54 yards for the touchdown. 7-zip Ole Miss. They win it 13-6. Glenn Milburn, who was a Heisman candidate earlier in the year, having a big game. On the receiving end of a touchdown pass from Steve Stintz from earlier. Look at this move right here. Well, past Torrey Hunter. He'll go 31 yards. And that made it 17-3 Stanford. The game has now moved into the fourth quarter. 42 yards receiving, 31 yards on the ground. Milburn having a big day. Now... Typically, this particular day is always huge. We call it Shake Up Saturday, and once again, it doesn't disappoint. Nebraska taking on Iowa State. In the 14 previous meetings, Iowa State had lost by a combined average of 43 to 9. Tommy Frazier, having a typical Tommy Frazier early game, scrambling around and passing to Lance Lewis, a 15-yard strike. That made it 10-6 Huskers. Third quarter, 17-10 Iowa State. Marv Seiler. That's right, a third-string quarterback coming around the right end. He'll take it all the way down to the two-yard line. And then they get the touchdown, move ahead by a score of 19 to 10. He had never played before, and the Iowa State fans tear down the goalpost and break the 14-game losing streak to Nebraska. It is without question the shocker of the year to this point. Ty Stewart with four field goals in the ballgame today. Now, this obviously meant that Colorado and the Kansas game became more important. What happened to Ralphie? Take a look early. First quarter on third down, Chip Hillary in the shotgun under pressure. Marcellus Elder will tip it, and Leonard Renfro takes it in. That made it 7-0. That would be the difference in the ball game. 25 to 18, seven points the difference. Cordell Stewart, 22 of 34 for 304 yards. Now Colorado needs some help from Oklahoma, and they could be dancing with oranges on New Year's Day. Now, Illinois taking on Michigan today. The Fighting Illini with Jason Verduzgo finding some offense, and the Wolverines in the Rose Bowl, but out of the national championship hunt. We're going to show you why. Craig? Fourth quarter. It's a great call because the DBs are running into the end zone for coverage. He's got the option to run. He can run well. Yeah, Verduzgo gets it in. And then the field goal attempt. What's bizarre about this is on third down, Moeller chose not to let Orville's Elvis Gerback go to the end zone. He set up simply for the tie. 22-22, clinching the Rose Bowl and clinching the fact that Michigan will not have a chance for a national championship. Washington taking on Oregon State. 45 to 16, the Huskies clinched the Pac-10 and the Rose Bowls. For a one-hour special presentation, Saturday night.